Thank you for inviting me into your home or office tonight. This has been recorded on Easter Sunday night, April 17, 2022. Pastor Steve Altide at Park Street Christian Church in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. I want to share a blog piece from a friend of mine, former Bible College professor of mine way back in the day at Ozark Bible College then, David Roadcup. David is has been serving with E2 Elders for the last few years, doing a great work with that wonderful ministry to church leaders, particularly elders. This is entitled, Hope, the Best of Things. How would you define hope, he writes. Hope is defined as the following, cherishing a desire with anticipation to want something to happen or to be true, to desire with expectation or of obtainment or fulfillment, to expect with confidence. Hope is a powerful thing. It's a positive expectation for the future, expecting positive desired outcomes. Hope is our anchor. Hope becomes a tent peg for the future when the storms hit us hard. Hope sustains us in the deepest valleys and the darkest moments. The nature of hope, sustained by faith, undergirds our lives with strength and vibrant expectations. The great preacher Fred Craddock wrote, and I quote, you can put hope in chains and hope will figure out a way to drag the chain to an old familiar tune sung by slaves and start humming. You can put hope in a pile of sticks and say you are to live there and it'll carve one of the sticks into a flute and begin to play. You can put hope in a cave and say you have to live in this cave and hope will take berry juice and paint pictures on the wall. You just can't seem to kill hope. Hope can live on one calorie a day. End of quote. Hope is a wonderful blessing to those who have faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and we desperately need hope. Hope is, a, is incredibly important for every believer because of the stresses and struggles of life that present themselves almost every day to us. What's going on in our world right now? Well, we see record high inflation, a 40-year high, dramatically affecting gasoline, food prices, and and um, we have supply chain issues. We see lawlessness in almost all of our large cities. Abounding disrespect and selfishness is, of course, one of the reasons why we have lawlessness in our large cities. Ongoing attempts to destroy our American culture by activists and politicians. And again, that goes back to some of the previous points, abounding disrespect and selfishness. Uh, the heartbreaking war waged in Ukraine by Vladimir Putin and his armies are um, portrayed before us on the daily media. So there's all kinds of problems. Difficulties are abound around us every day. Hope is the one major response to the fact that someone greater than our circumstances remains in control. At times we struggle not to lose hope. Even believers in Christ sometimes struggle struggle here. We should provide encouragement to those around us to take heart. No matter who we are, if you're a believer in Christ, do everything you can to give encouragement to take heart to those around you. We should remind everyone around us of the strong teaching of Scripture when it comes to hope. Psalm 130 verse 7 says, Israel, hope in the Lord. For the with the Lord there is loving kindness and with him is abundant redemption. So, uh, Romans fifteen thirteen in the New Testament. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you'll abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. This hope that we have is an anchor for the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one that enters within the veil where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a... High priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Again, that was from Hebrews, the 6th chapter, verse 19 and 20. So as believers in Jesus, knowing our Father is in complete control, we hope in God. Our hope is not in ourselves. It's certainly not in our wealth. It's not in our surroundings. And it can't be in our nation. Our confidence has to be because based in our Heavenly Father 
and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our hope is based on these facts. These are facts. God our Father is still on the throne. Nothing happening in our world today was a surprise to Him. Not one thing. There's always been times of great stress, struggle, and difficulty in the world and in the lives of believers. You can't read the book of Acts and not see that. And it's been that way for Christians ever since. Our Father continues to be active in the world and He is in control. We've been reminded by Peter in 2 Peter 2, verse 9, 10, and 11. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wages war against the soul. In this impacting text, Peter reminds us that we don't belong here forever. He reminds us that we are aliens, strangers, and sojourners on a journey. We are not permanent residents here. The spiritual facts should encourage us and remind us that whatever we see happening around us is temporary and not our final reality. As we see events unfold, we realize that we are on our way home to our final destination. There are many points of help given to us to assist us on our journey to heaven. Hope is certainly one of the best. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I quote, I know somehow that only when it's dark enough can you see the stars. End of quote. So I want to challenge you to keep looking up to Jesus daily. Spend some time in His Word daily. Spend some time on your knees daily. Draw near to Him in these perilous times. I'm befuddled that our churches aren't full there's plenty of believers around who are not attending, not involved, um, that need to be. You're seeing the same news that I'm seeing. And so that should be alerting us um, that things are not right. And yet God's in control. And if our nation is to be saved, it will only because be because of God's involvement through his people, through revival first. So... Let's get busy. Let's get on our knees. Let's get in the Word and pray and seek God's face and keep our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ and our permanent home, heaven, and allow Him to work in us daily to shape us into the image of Christ as followers of Jesus, that we might help produce more disciples of Jesus who can produce more disciples of Jesus. That's the answer to turning around our nation, my friends. It starts with Jesus, and it ends with Him as we surrender fully to Him.